Hey, you guys are right on time. I like that about you. <laughs> well, as you notice, this is not Nikki. It's uh, not as pretty as the picture, but it's just as good. This is Jackson or Jack or whichever you want to call him. How are you doing today, Jackson? I'm good. I'm doing great. Today was a great day. How are you today? Oh, I'm great. It wasn't a fantastic day for me on the market, but not every day is a plus day. Just end of the week. We'll add it up. We'll see what happens. Yes, exactly. Something exactly. came up. Nikki couldn't show up today. That's life. All sorts of surprises. But Jackson likes to trade OTC stocks. Jackson's got some opinions. I don't know if they're in line with mine. Doesn't matter. The more the merrier. I like lots of opinions. So the market has been pretty bleak this week, don't you think, Jackson? The volume hasn't been yep. all that wonderful. Yep. It's been it's been pretty dry. Um, today was a lot better. Um, I think today, relative. I think today was a little better, uh, just from what I'm I'm in personally. Um, we had some some runners and for me, but um, you know I haven't been in OTC that long. Only probably two or three weeks uh, where I've been actively trading. I've been doing research and whatnot for a very long time. It's always interested me, uh, but I've never really traded that often with it. You know, I got into HC. Um, I think it was HCMC um, a while ago, um, and uh, you know that one failed. That's where I really started with OTC. I love to do the due diligence on it. Um, you know, I, I failed on HCMC, but uh, I've just kind of been sucked in ever since. And ever since Weeble added the capability to um, right. OTC trading, I've uh, I've really gotten into it. Um, so they don't have everything, but they've they've got a lot. Um, and so I'll take what I can get. And there's no fees. That's great. No fees, uh, I no think fees. another site is uh, Aries Trading or Trading Aries. I can't remember. They're a new site. They're backed by Trading Station. That's their backbone to it. It's not a fancy site with scanners and all that sort of stuff, but if you know what stock you want to buy, they don't charge. So, you know, you put your ticker in and they told me themselves that they will sell expert markets shares. So if you see a stock that you own, that's on the expert market. I mean, you may have paid, I don't know, double zero five. That's a decent price. It falls down to four zero five on the expert market. Wouldn't you like to buy those? Oh my God. Talk about averaging Every down. Time unheard of every and time. The great thing about buying an expert market if you know they're coming on the market and there are some telltale signs if you're doing your due diligence when they come back they normally go back to the price area the zone where they were at before they got yanked and most of the time because the price is so low it shoots so fast it overshoots the target and then comes back down and i have seen that over and over now think about that you buy a stock at it four zero five and it goes all the way up to double zero five what what is that uh ten thousand oh, percent gains. Yeah. that's a ten thousand percent gains for every one hundred dollar bill you invested you made ten thousand dollars so it may be worth checking into aries trading or is it trading aries it's one of the two yeah you're right jackson i just checked the volume we were higher today uh yeah. yesterday we were under eight billion today we're just under ten billion Things seem to pick up a little bit on the OTC, at least Finally. a tech billion. Finally, it's uh, so I think uh, the the dollar the dollar uh, liquidity dollar volume yesterday was under two billion as well, uh, which was pretty pretty low. Yeah, our average is two point one. Sometimes yeah. we're above. We did get up to uh, four something about a month ago. We were falling, falling. Everything started recovering, and now we're in a bounce mode. Uh, we hit 4.2 billion shares after over a year fall. And I mean falling, not bouncing, just falling. And it was about two months ago we hit 4.2 and then got up to 15 billion. And now we're struggling to stay up at 10 billion. So you do what you can. Um, what you can. That's right. And that's the nice thing about the OTC. There's enough stocks out there that something is always running for some reason. And my video yesterday right. it was a slow day. There was some silly reasons stocks were running. It doesn't matter the reason. You know, it doesn't even matter if there is a reason. If the stock is running, that's a day trade. You're in yep, it. Right, for, that's right. Right? It doesn't matter if the CEO got popped for drunk driving. It doesn't matter right Pretty now. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. So, <laughs> I mean, money's money, right? Um, I personally, uh, one of my my bigger wins in OTC recently, like I said, I'm, I'm a novice. I you know I'm a little, uh, you know, I'm not not huge into i wouldn't call myself an expert but i you know like I, I've, I've had some decent trades recently uh was nxmr it was one of it was a great uh, due diligence trade um 
you know, they, they've got, it's all speculation. They've got some meetings and filings and, and blah, 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 you know, all, all that jazz uh, coming up tomorrow. And so um, lots and lots and lots of um, run-ups have happened. In fact, 151.53% uh, from my personal alert uh, over in the district. There you go. So I, I, I did not take 151%, but still feels good to call it out and have it run to 151%. Um, yes, it does. All right, let's see. Oh, that's going to be too fast here. I've got some scrolling news that I normally put by. Uh, let me slow this down. I normally record this, and it's going way too fast right now. So let me just save this. I actually write HTML code, so I come up with this stuff myself. All right, let me get this share up here. This is news that I've been reading over the last mm, five days, maybe. I'm just going to take up the whole screen here. Oh, it didn't do it. I hate this place. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I hate that. Let me get over there, folks. Sorry about that. There you go. Like I said, this is news that I have personally read. This comes from the OTC market. They're all penny stocks, of course, but they're not penny stocks on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. And I do play a lot of those, to be totally honest, because I'm tired of paying $14 for an OTC trade, $7 to get in, $7 to get out, roughly for, with TD Ameritrade. So I like the penny stocks over at the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange because they're free to trade. You've also got an entirely different trading audience over there. Right. You got big boys, institutions, right? I mean, right. you get a lot more activity on penny stocks, especially pre-market, aftermarket activity. Those those stocks will run. And I particularly like to find stocks that have been notified of non-compliance of their price. It'll be under a dollar on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. You can't be under a buck, not for too long. You've got to get your price over a dollar for at least 20 days. It has to close over a dollar for 20 days or they'll throw you down to the OTC market like it's a bad punishment. It's not. The OTC is bad if you've been on the NASDAQ. It costs about 75 grand to get up there in the first place. But uh, they normally, and I think I've got a stock I saw today I might share with you, that uh, when they get under a dollar, some magical powers come along, whether it be a tweet, a deal, uh, something and it will get that price over a dollar so i like to find those because they normally get something underneath them to push them up right yeah that's uh it's interesting i didn't i didn't know that it cost 75k to uh keep you um to keep you on the net to keep you on the NASDAQ. yeah i think it's million. almost a half a million to uplist to the new york stock exchange i did know that i didn't know that it's, <laughs> it's a hefty penny yeah, it is. And when if you get kicked off, it's not like they count it. No, you got to do it all over again. Nobody oh, wants really? to qualify. Even, and uh, wow, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Um, well, I've, here's I've, where you can I've, join us, folks. Don't mean to interrupt you, Jackson, but that is our our address right there. We'd love to have you over at our Discord. That's where Jackson yes, and I are at, and lots of please. others. I got to admit, the, the OTC section's a little dry right now. We moved it from Titan Trading over to Penny Boys because Penny Boys is all stocks. Titan Trading was also NFTs and cryptos, and we were just kind of the extra shoe. We didn't belong over there. So they brought us over to Penny Boys. And the market has, you know, have you noticed the market's lost a lot of its traders? I mean, I have. Maybe I have three, four, just, six months ago, know, it got really thin. They are either they either moved over to crypto, uh, NFTs, or, you know, they just got tired of paying those fees. Um, you know, maybe maybe they moved to options. Maybe they just got out of the game completely. Um, it's not not the same game anymore. It's no, not, it's not the same game anymore. We're waiting for the game to come back. Yes. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Maybe, maybe in the you know once September October rolls around, we'll see some some spikes in volume. And, you and know, I've said this before. You know, we need a. It's almost like we need a primer. You know, like CPR on the heart or something. And I've suggested that marijuana could be the primer for the OTC market if laws passed here in America, because there are over 1,000 marijuana companies on the OTC. And if a thousand companies started running, that would bring in so much extra yeah, buyer. I mean, that's one twelfth sure. of the market. For sure. I mean, that's, just, so that's an opinion. How do you feel about, um, you know, some of this monkeypox stuff. Like I, I personally entered into a trade on, um, oh, where are they? NNVC is the ticker. 
Um, at three dollars fifty four cents, it ran to about three eighty eight today. Um, now it's sitting at three sixty two. Um, you know, they're, they're uh, they are not. You want to share that screen with us? Show it yeah. because yes, I think monkeypox is going to be good. So if you found one that's already started running, monkeypox is just starting. Yes. And I mm-hmm. just talked about one yesterday. T O M D F, Totos Medical. They just are about ready to come out with a monkeypox test kit. And there was another one just a couple of days ago. Same thing. As soon as the news came out and the word monkeypox was there, boom. boom. And remember, our COVID tests, that was big business. And it came late, real late. Real late. This is getting ahead of the game. So if you've got something, man, it may be hot. Yeah, I mean, this this immediately jumped, what, 48% today. Uh, it opened at essentially 48%. So. Um, this is just something that popped up on one of my, uh, you know, I've just been seeing a lot of news about it. I did a little bit of reading into it, saw that they dealt with uh, monkeypox. And then uh, the U.S. said that monkeypox is a national health emergency. And boom, mm-hmm. that, right. that was whenever I was like, oh, you know, this stock jumped in the morning. You know, it had had some decent movement. And then once, um, you know, I had a little bit of conviction on it. I liked the company. And then uh, I saw that we we announced that monkeypox is a na- national health emergency i was in you know i may as well throw a little bit at it yeah i did not know about this company nnvc and the so other they, one I they're not at, otc they're not otc but they are uh you know small cap very small cap so figured i'd bring them up what, what's their current price uh three dollars 65 cents still a penny stock folks yeah, under five dollars is a penny stock not that you get any tax breaks or anything but that's what we talk about <laughs> stocks under five bucks so nnvc t-o-m-d-f and darned if i can remember the third one it's in my video a couple of days ago it's actually in my video folks when i do my videos i may focus in on three stocks and you see three tickers but i'm covering about three to five other ones that we haven't got time to talk about but i can give you the ticker and the catalyst and you can pick up the ball from there Got to leave you some work to do, don't I? <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> awesome. All right. I see we have a question here about INND. Are you familiar with INND, Jackson? I am not. I Are do you? believe this is the hearing company. Let me get over there and we'll just grab the whole screen and I'll jump on over there. Sorry, folks. Hope I don't cause an epileptic seizure on somebody. All right, INND. I do believe this is Interscope Hearing Technologies. This company uh, had two deals. They bought Hearing Assist and another company. And I do, oh, I hear, I hear direct. They had these two companies they bought, and one of them came with a contract for Walmart. They are already doing business with Walmart, and that just came with it. And they had news just a little while ago. Actually, I think it was a filing that Walmart had increased their order after they had gotten the, the company to $10 million and doubled the amount of stores from 7,000 to 14,000 stores that they were going to be putting this into all the vision centers. They were going to be putting this carousel or this kiosk, what, whatever it is. So they are doing very well. As a matter of fact, I just saw another hearing company the other day that is doing very well. It seems a lot of people are losing their hearing. It's probably all that loud rock and roll we listened to when we were teenagers Let's go take a look at that chart, see what INND is doing. All right, that's a short chart. Let's pull this back a wee bit. Uh, let's look at the full year. Now, I can't correlate it, but I'm sure this is probably with one of the deals. This is probably the other deal, you know, the two acquisitions. And she has been running downhill until about a couple months ago, and she's had a change of direction now, folks. Her trend has definitely changed. All of the technicals are strong on the yearly. Looking at, let's come down to that uh, 20 day. Yeah. So she is even in the short term now. She's picking up more momentum and lifting herself up. She's now riding on the 50 day SMA pretty securely. We do see a hold back in the technicals right now, but nothing severe. Five minute, five day. There you go. You know, each time we get closer, on these time frames, you see the last couple of days have been pretty steady and then, then there's a jump and that's what we just keep seeing. Now we're down to five days. The last four have been pretty steady and another jump. 
So you're kind of doing the stair step in a very casual way. It is looking good. It's not looking like dynamite. Doesn't look explosive, but they've got solid business. In Walmart, gee whiz, I don't know how many stores they got. You think they got more than 14,000 stores? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah, trying to do it all. I don't know. But, you know, they've doubled it already. And I think the business is growing. So, you know, it's not a day trade stock. But on the long term, it's showing growth. It's just had a trend change. And what was its high back there on the year? Back before they had all the new business, back before they owned both companies. Back then it was at two and a half cents. And right now we are at 1.1. So that's over 100% just to get back to its original high. And like I said, that was before they had all this big business. They're earning their keep now. Absolutely are. And like I said, those technicals are very strong across the board. Now, if you don't mind, Jackson, I'd like to take a minute. And since I've got it up here, I'd like to show them uh, the new oscillators I'm using in a pattern. Yeah, I would love to. I would, I would love to learn about them too. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos regularly, about six weeks ago, I introduced you to two new oscillators that I started using. Now, I've used the MACD. That's an oscillator. I use the RSI. The RSI, honestly, is just a price line. If we take all these bars and turn them into a line, that's the line right there. So you really don't need that, but you might, it's nice to know how much it's rising. MACD, we're all familiar with the MACD. You want to keep the blue line on top of the other line stay above the signal line. The two new osculators I am using are PPO, that is percentage price osculator. It is the cousin to the MACD. The MACD uses the price where the percentage price osculator uses the percentage gains in the price. But they're very similar, but the subtle differences are grand. And the other one here is ADX. This measures the trend. It's actually showing you when the trend changes. Now, it doesn't matter the direction of the line. The line may be coming down and the price is going up. The price, this may be coming down and the price is coming down. It isn't showing you the direction of the trend. It's just showing you, is the trend continuing? And as soon as you see a change in direction, that means the trend is changing. Now, what I want to do here, I've got a, let me see if I can pull this back to uh, one hour. Uh, let's try 30 minutes. I think this is the right one. Yeah. All right. I am going to draw some timelines here, folks, so this stands out for you clear as a bell. I'm, going to, I'm using the Heiken Ashi bars here. They change color. You never have a blank spot with these. They're red when they're going down. They're green when they're going up. Simple. And there's other things they have advantages to, but you can see patterns very easily here. But we're not looking for patterns on the chart. We're looking for patterns down here. So I'm going to draw a timeline right where it changes color. One right there, one right there, here. Now, because there's a trend change, I'm going to draw one here because that is falling down, but then it's going sideways. Then it starts falling down again, another timeline, and that's definitely a trend change. Now, I am not really looking at the chart. I just drew my lines so that you can see where this is coming from, how it affects. Look down here, our PPO and our ADX. Set them up the way you see them. PPO on the top, ADX on the bottom, and use them together to give you a pattern. Do you see the mirror image here? You see that blue line coming down, and you see this red line coming up. They look like they're copying each other right now. As they are coming closer together, the price is guaranteed to be falling. The trend is changed. You can see the trend is coming down. Now look at each line. Each line shows a bend in the lines. It's very accurate. These are very accurate. When they get super close like this and then start to spread apart, like you see on the other side, guaranteed you're going to get a rise, a strong rise, as long as they're going apart. Now, that is not the only pattern. They can both be going up and it can be going up. But that sometimes is difficult when everything's going crazy. This, the mirror image stands out with your PPO on the top, your ADX on the bottom. This shows the trend is continuing. This shows the price is rising. When it gets above the pink line and continues rising, it picks up some momentum. We have a dip right there. You can see she's leveling off right now. This will follow the price. 
as long as these two are separated, that shows the trend is still growing. Now, when you go back, you know, to the bigger picture, look at your trend. Is the trend still on the big picture? Now, if you come down to the minute, it can be wild, folks, because the trend is going up and down, up and down all over the place. Do, 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 do. That's great if you're trying to find an exit. But if you're looking for your trade, you want to see if I should stay in this for another hour, see what the patterns look like. Is the trend not changing? Is the price still going up? Now, your MACD and your RSI are backups to that. You get a crossover in your MACD going down. Well, it is a technical you got to pay attention to. It could be a forewarning to look here. Same thing with the RSI. You start seeing that fall, then look for a change in direction here. But that's it, folks. You can see the mirror image here. When they come together, the price falls. When they come apart, the price goes up all the time. And that will build your confidence. I use this now, folks. This is my primary entry and exit tool. I watch for this. And when this starts to change and I don't have my pattern anymore, I take my gains and I get out. Now, it may flex and go back to its stuff. That's okay. I don't have the frustration. I don't have the worry. All right. That's about it. I hope that helps somebody out there. Yeah, Practice help with me. it. See what you get. Help me. So was the PPO and the ADX, correct? Yep. yep. And PPO make sure the PPO is on the top and the ADX is on the bottom so that you can see the mirror image. So... All right. And so just so I understand, a divergence usually means uh, it's going to the trend is going to change. It's going to reverse. If yeah. Like going opposite directions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I use the words divergence and convergence. Sometimes I, I, I try to keep it as simple as I can for everybody spreading apart and coming together. But yeah. Um, when you see the divergence and as I said, it's not the only pattern. Right. Right. You can see right here. Both are going up beautifully everything's going up what's the price doing going up so i'm not saying it's the only pattern it's just a real simple one that is almost 99 percent accurate you can count on it when they come together and they go apart falling and rising this you could ride out but th this could change while well, well, that's still going up it's it gets weird but that's why i say throw them up on your board just get used to watching them and see if you see the pattern and then watch it say whoa he was right look at it go it's going it's looking like an hourglass and that's what i look for the hourglass coming in gotcha. and then going out interesting i'll have to i'll have to keep that in mind throw that on my charts all right let me come on back over there i get lost with all these windows ah <laughs> all right let me see what we got for comments over here morph siebel's good to see you i don't think i've seen you here before if i have missed you i'm sorry who let's see what we got here who the best cannabis stock? Thanks, guys. Cannabis stock, best? Well, what's best? You know, best brand, uh, highest market cap, most potential. I got to tell you, cannabis is what I followed since 2018. It's what got me into trading, and it's what killed me the most because I hung on to it like an anchor since 2018 up until COVID, and it fell all the way till COVID, March 18th. That was the bottom for the cannabis market when the government said, Cannabis has been made essential business. It had nothing to do with me and you. It had to do with they got taxes off of it. So they literally put people on the corners of the street selling marijuana to people in cars. Imagine that concept. Wow, who thought of that? But anyways, that was the bottom. Since then, things are getting better, but right now they're pretty crappy. I'll admit it. Cureleaf, Cureleaf looks good. Laws pass here. Don't they have a merger deal with the U.S. company? Now, you got to remember this, folks. Cannabis isn't all one sector. That is to say, you got Canadian cannabis, which is totally different than US cannabis, MSOs. You got South African, you got Uruguay, you got Israel. They all have different laws. They're all progressing at different rates. They all have different research levels. I mean, Israel's 15 years ahead of us in research on marijuana. We've only got two places researching here in the US. It's against the law to study marijuana still. You can study LSD, DMT. Uh, you can study ecstasy, but you can't study marijuana. God almighty. So there's a lot of companies that have potential. Um, Harborside. Harborside's been catching my attention. They've been doing a lot of small acquisitions. They just did something too, and they're getting bigger and bigger. These people have 53, 70, 150 dispensaries already. And once the law is passed, the synergy of being able to connect them all, because right now what's growing in California stays in California. 
can't go into other states, other countries. We just can't do it. But once all the borders are taken away and we can move that stuff around, boy, these MSOs are going to explode with synergy. I mean, you're just going to launch. So really look at their facilities. Look at the management. Can Trust is a great example. Fifth largest cannabis company on the boards. And they got caught growing illegal marijuana in a spare room of their dispensary grow area. How stupid. And they're still trying to get back on the market to this day. Can trust. Nobody trusts them anymore. So I would do that. Just look at what they own. How many dispensaries? Growth. You see companies growing. When things get right, those bad boys are going to ignite. Yep. I've got I've got one uh, that's uh, OTC uh, Canada whatever. Um, it's Luff L U F F. Um, it's uh, just something to look into. Um, I'm not I have no position or anything like that. But uh, it's L U F F. Yes. L U F F. All right, keep talking. I'm going to pull that bad yeah, boy out. So I'm not familiar with it. Luff, I know Luff Canada. Um, if you want to, it's a good one. It was e easy research, not a whole bunch to it. So if you want to practice on something. Uh, uh, to any of you guys out there, uh, take take a look at it. Um, so I'm not going to say a whole bunch on it. Um, it's sitting at. There it is. Love is Enterprise. One, one point six cents. So. Um, uh, pink, ooh, look at that. Boy, they got a hundred and fifty six percent jump today, brother. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yeah. OK, we can talk about love. I need to yep. know this time. Yes, did. I'm surprised so. that I have a penny stock Facebook page. I put news up every day since March of 2018. I load that page up with cannabis news. I do not know this company. How did this get by me? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to have a chat right after this. Uh, but, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see what their uh, share structure is like. 422 million, about a half a billion. Didn't prevent it from jumping hard today, though. Financials. Uh, that F on the end there, the last F, means it's a foreign company. As you said, Canada, Canada, Canada. Canada. a lot of these Canadian companies, they're doing all their filings over in Canada. Just because you don't see them here, it doesn't mean they're not here. They just don't bring them over here. And yeah, okay, so we can't get much information. I'll have to look into this one. Uh, one I do like, which is, well, they're just becoming an MSO, is Planet 13. Oh, you know yes. I, li I like that company. Like I don't I've never looked at them financially, but I just like the company. Um, well, they started off with just one dispensary, Las Vegas, the biggest dispensary. And they wouldn't put it on the strip. So they put it at the very end of the strip, which was even better. I mean, it's like sitting at the head of the table now. They're right there at the end of the strip and you can look right down the entire strip. And they are now trying to get a area where you can smoke and actually test the stuff you're buying because you can't smoke it there. It's the only thing you can't do yet. And I do believe they're opening up one near Walt Disney. Uh, they're opening up another one somewhere else. And this company was making millions of dollars off of one dispensary because they do what? 50 million people, tourists a year in Nevada. And yeah. everybody, not everybody, not everybody smokes. That's an assumption. <laughs> But everybody who does smoke definitely wants to hit up Planet 13. So I really like Planet 13 for being just as little, and I don't mean size-wise square footage, but not having a lot of facilities in a lot of states. They're kicking butt, and they're picking key zones. You know, Walt Disney, Las Vegas, Nevada. You can't get yeah. better lots than that. Location, location, location. Holy All God. right, we got any other questions over here? Something I can look at for someone. Let's see here. We got a question here, reverse split to get over a dollar. Yeah, that is the fear. That is the fear. When stocks on the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange fall under a buck, that is one of the options. If they can't get it up with good cause, they'll get it up with the bad one and you'll get caught. They will Now, you know, you got to look at the share structures. A lot of companies did reverse splits to get to the NASDAQ and they really can't afford to do another reverse split. They just can't muster it up. And they would be the ones ending up falling off unless the uh, shareholders authorized an increase in their authorized shares. And that's a whole different matter right there, too. So you're right. That is something to consider as a fix, which isn't a good thing if you're looking at sub dollar penny stocks on the New, New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. Right. Howdy, gents. Hello, Snookeroo. Good to see you, my friend. What are you saying here about Dash? Oh, let's see. 
Dash is just flying. I know it's not OTC, but damn, what a move. Congrats. <laughs> what is Dash? Dash. Uh, I should be familiar DoorDash. with Door Dash. Yeah, yeah right. No, There's a lot. Of, that's still big business, folks. I just covered another company over, um, which one was that? Oh, Sizu. Ticker C Z O O. They're a food oh, delivery yeah. company in Canada. Yeah, Canada. And uh, these food delivery companies are just smashing it. There's another company that's changing its ticker to ASAP. Is that that right? I think that's right. A S A P. I think that's right. And they deliver anything in one day. You want car parts, groceries, booze, marijuana. They'll deliver anything to your door. And it's like, well, yeah, now we're talking. Why just focus on food? Why just yeah, focus everything. on cannabis? If you're a delivery, do like the mail. Do like UPS. Deliver everything. Well, not everything. They won't deliver cannabis yet. But you can. So, yeah, I think that is going to be great business myself. Yeah. Yeah, uh, DoorDash is up 20%. I wonder if any of these uh, other companies are going to have a sympathy, a uh, little sympathy play. Off of, uh, oh, there's one more F on Luff. Yep, triple I F. I want to see that 156% gain. It was That's a very game. low volume. Seeing that, that excites me. Uh, low volume, as a matter of fact, let's take a peek over there and see what the volume was. Quote yeah, I'm going to say it was in like the hundreds even. What? It says zero. Oh, can't be true. Oh, that can't be right. You can't always trust this thing. Uh, let's just go on over to the chart then. Well, they don't show anything down here. We got nothing. Let's see what it says on about 500. 500. So she was at a low. That's all you re really get. She was down here at 0064 and went to, well, think of it as six and a half to 16 and a half. So you did. You, you had a nice jump. And there's a couple of other stocks that did that today, as a matter of fact, since we're talking about that. This one here, is it still there? This actually did 8,669% gains today on 100 shares. And it started, you can actually see, I don't I don't know if this just came off the uh, expert market. That It may. I looked around. I really tried to find out. Its last sale was in October. It was $1.16. So when it opened up this morning, somebody bought 100 shares at $98.84 and kicked it up to 100 bucks. So that that low float. But see, I never look at those really. 100, 200, those are ones I just go by. I just don't count them because that's one person, maybe two yeah. people. And what I'm looking for, as I show everybody, my favorite page on the Internet. Right there, folks. Well, second to favorite. I come in closer. I'm just looking at the advancers. And I like this page because it shows me the trades right there. I can see the gains, but what good does it do to see a stock that's had 900% gains and only had two trades? Well, that's you're not going to get any price action there. Nobody else is bidding. Now, this one don't count. Remember what I was telling you about expert market? Look at that price. One, two, three, yeah. four zeros. Here's five zeros. Five zeros. Five zeros. So if you could buy this stock and you saw that, see, now when you come over, I just showed you here that you can actually come over and see what it was trading at before it went off the market. That They'll actually show you the last days of trade. Doggone it. I can't find that page now. But uh, that's what it, that is. So you can actually buy the stocks if you know it's coming back on the market. But I look for stocks that have big numbers. And a big number is not 36, it is not 20. You want something over 50, over 100. And today was a slow day. So here we got uh, SEII. She jumped 51%. Now this is every stock on the OTC market, all 12,000 of them. If you keep rolling this down, you'll see all 12,000 stocks eventually. So out of all 12,000 stocks, folks, that right there, boom. That right there is the last of your 100% gainers. That's it. Out of 12,000 stocks, this was all we had over 100% today. E gets that's not much. Now, I like this page in the morning because it's updated every 15 minutes. You do have to hit the refresh button. It's not live. But you come over here at 10, 10.30 in the morning. Yeah, some stuff has already run that morning bounce. And I kind of break the day up into two sections, maybe three. The morning up to 10 used to be 10 30 but fool's hour is only a half hour long now and i do that 
they play a morning play. Then you have your day where you catch those stocks that are just running all day long. And then you got the last hour, power hour. You look for something to change, some you know long hitting play. So I'll come over here during 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and I'll look for stocks that have got a couple hundred trades. In this case, I'm looking for 50. But then I go over there. I click this. First thing I do is look at the news, see if there's anything that came out today. And don't just look at the top because sometimes there'll be news down here at the bottom. I don't see anything new there. So I'll come over to disclosures, financials. That might be it. But I look here. No, we don't have any SEC filings. So at this point, if I don't find any catalyst, there's obviously a reason 195 trades were done. And I think 195 trades is how many people you think that is, Jackson? 100? 150? Uh I honestly couldn't tell you, but yeah, probably ish around there. Yeah. I mean, I'm not figuring that's two people, no. 195 trades, right? So yeah, and I doubt it's 195 is, separate traders. <laughs> right. There's a crowd there. And as long as you got a crowd of people somewhere, you're going to have activity, bad or good. You're going to have activity. And since we're looking at the advancer board, it's a good party. Everything's cool. So at this point, I'd run over to Twitter. I just make it quick and simple. I could go to Google, but that's a lot of information. You can put on time filters. You know, I do everything to shortcut my work and effort into research. But Twitter is one of the quickest ways. You can look at top, see what's most popular, or just put it on latest and see if anything has come up in the last hour. And you'll be on top of the game. And sometimes, and I will tell you what, folks, there are lots of plays that you can find on Twitter, just technicals. Not a bloody word typed about the company in a month. Three months, nothing, not a filing, nothing. But the technicals look great, and they're talking about it on Twitter, and they're telling you how low a flow it is and how many big block purchases were just made. Accumulation is happening, and then everybody over there sucks into it, and guaranteed that sucker runs, and I look everywhere. And I want to talk about these on my videos, but that's all I can tell you. There's a Twitter group. You know, just like Reddit has its short plays, Twitter has its tech plays on triple zeros on double zeros where you make the big bucks if you can catch them because if it goes the wrong way you're going to be stuck holding a empty bag for a while yes, let know. me see check our questions i don't want to miss anything here uh smck the like bottom the like button smack the like button oh smack the like button cheese oh pete <laughs> I thought he was giving me a ticker, SFCK. All right, Snookaroo, you got me there. Hope you're laughing, pal. CZNI dips. Yeah, what's up? You know, folks, since you brought that up, uh, Thebes. Good to see you, Thebes. Mike CP, um, I got something for you, pal. You guys still see my, yeah. Now, you know, there's a lot more information than this, but we're not always looking for stocks that are running right this minute. There were stocks that were running last week two weeks ago because there was big news, big mergers, big acquisitions. There were things that were in progress. And as it is on OTC, when news comes out to announce something's going to happen, that is normally when we see the biggest bounces. When it actually occurs and they close the deal, whoop, it's just a little blip because it's maybe already built into the price or something. I really don't know. But this is stuff that is still on the table. These are plays still going on right now that have calmed down. CZNI is one of them. She went through that reverse merger. She's waiting on the name change to Baumo. Uh, Baumo is that online recruiting agency, if you will. They're an online job search, I think. I think I got that right. But you got KRTL. That's a takeover. They took the ticker over. They're into psilocybin and CBD. You got a lot of backing there. Uh, TXTM, if you remember, is the largest South African cannabis company. We're still waiting for that to finalize, folks. CZNI. AGSS is the one I'm really excited about, folks. That's AmeriGuard Security Services. This company has got contracts with the U.S. government, lots and lots of them. They actually provide the security for lots of military bases, for veterans administrations. They have just got somebody on the board who's in the government, I believe. They got a five-star general on the board. This company is already making money, and they just put out a uh, interview the other day, and they're talking about more acquisitions, expansion. They do home security. 
big time. Anything you can imagine, you, if you're thinking it, they probably do it. So I like that company and they just got the ticker. SBOTS, this is a brand new merger with Quantum Core. Half the day, it wasn't trading today and it's jumping. Now, agreed, it's jumping from $0.08 cents to $0.28, cents, but there's no entry in the middle. That is the ask and the bid. I'm just saying it's a fresh play. They just made this merger. It just happened. Max D merger. Uh, this is a stereo sound company. They merged with a Japanese company. And that's still happening out there. Then we got reverse mergers to come. ICNM, WNFT, and HVCW. All of these waiting to happen. These two are waiting to go pink. And in case you don't know, investors love it when their company gets off to pink limited. That's the danger zone. Nobody wants to go to the expert market. And if you're on the pink too long, that's where you end up. And if you're invested, your, your investment's in limbo. You can't touch it. Well, you can, but you just saw the prices I showed you on the expert market. <laughs> if you paid 005, would you sell yours at 401? Oh, that's awfully nice of you to offer it up. Let me sell, but you won't let me buy. And that's what most companies will do. They'll let you sell to the expert market, but you can't buy off of it. That's, I'm going to say the word again. That's crap, folks. That just isn't right. That's why I like trading Aries, Aries trading, whichever. If you can buy expert market, that's going to be the biggest money maker. If you pick the right one, do your DD and you could get rich. I'm not kidding, folks. I found one that I, the video's out there. It's called 89,000%. We called it. The day before I pointed it out on the board, I said, look, folks, all the filings are in. There's your attorney letter. This looks righteous. It's going to go. I looked at the chart. I said, folks, if it goes back to its normal price, that's going to be a 17,000% gain. Now, what blooming idiot tells anybody that there's going to be a 17,000% gain? Do you know it went on the market the next day and went to 89,000%? I do not kid you folks, $100 bill could have made you $89,000. Unbelievable. You could have been rich, but you had to know. The only place I found to find out is, and I'm not pushing the site folks, but it's critical information, filingsre.com. Matter of fact, I'll show you the site. How much time we got here? Like 15 minutes. Oh, we got some time. Good, because this is good information for you filingsre.com. Come on, put it in there right for me. No, I knew you wouldn't get it right. On a side note, um, I just read that AMC um, is, what is it? They are issuing a special dividend of one cent per share. If you still are holding some AMC, you picked up quite a bit. That was just really All right. Yeah. So. You know, I just, uh, I don't know if you caught this, but I did a show the other day about a company that is going out of business. Dissolution, it's not a bankruptcy. It's on my video. I can't remember the ticker, but they're selling their assets and they're divvying them to their shareholders. Really? Yes. The stock was at 12 cents and they gave a $1.16 dividend for every share you owned. Wow. Of course, the stock went up. It went up to 34 cents. They came out with another news press, which is when I told everybody, we plan on giving one or more dividends as we sell off our properties and assets. And I went over to Twitter and some guy who knows the company better than I did pointed out two assets. He says, well, when these sell off, that's at least 60 cents to a dollar per share again. So that's what you call a dividend, that's right? Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like to find strange stuff. There it is. Well, this site is not free. Um, I, I did it for a month just to give it a shot. It's $40 a month. They give you all the information that you could want. They give you everything the OTC gives you. You can see all the filings. That's easy enough. You, you can see um, tier changes, which is what I want to tell you. They actually show you. Let me see. They got alerts, overview, SOS. Uh, they tell you when a stock split is going to occur a reverse split, a forward split. They tell you all of that information beforehand, not afterhand. Anybody can do that. Sec filings, you get that over here. They do bring in live news constantly coming in. You get to see what tier they're on. Um, there's lots of information they give you there. And then the two that are my favorite, um, they tell you tier change, uh, when, when it is actually going to come out, and they tell you court documents. And on the OTC market, that's important stuff. 
these companies that are coming back onto the market, companies that have to eliminate shares, uh, companies that are doing acquisitions or mergers, they got to go to court sometimes to do a lot of this stuff. And the court document is the first tip off that something's going on before a filing. Sometimes they never file that stuff before a news press. Sometimes they never news press it. That court document. Now, I learned about it on Twitter because people kept showing pictures. It's like, where the heck are they getting this? Now, in truth, you ain't got to pay this company to get that information. Every company has to file in one state or another. Secretary of State, SOS. So you could go get in a Nevada, Maryland, Oregon. You could go to every single one. Most of them are free accounts. And you could go to every state and search. Who wants to do that? They bring it into you right here. And that's how you can catch a lot of information before anybody else has a clue. You talk about being ahead of the game. $40 could make you a lot of money. I wish I was advertising for something for this company. We should reach out to them. See if we can make that happen. Woof. Hate that. All right. Let's see. I'm going to bring the comments over here. I see we've got some more here. Thieves, you've got a lot to say. It's the MRMD cannabis company that makes profit. Best 50 OTC QX LOFO. Uh, Merrimed, isn't it? Merrimed. Yeah, Merrimed is a good one. And let's face it, the QX is the best tier on the OTC. And the, the reason it's the best is because they give you every bit of information about the company there is to have. They don't pick and choose. The QB gives you audited financials. That is something you can count on. The pinks, good luck. I mean, most of the time you only get disclosures, which are just them passing information off to you. I'm not saying you can't trust it, but if they're not honest or they're stupid, you could be getting bad information. Yep. But the QX, absolutely the best. You could go to the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange with all the transparency that they have. They would just have to meet the price requirement to do it. And if they're already in the top 50, well, come on now. Top 50 out of what was it? 1,000 cannabis stocks on the OTC. I consider MRMD. Absolutely. Um, I got into IMAC changing back. P. Lynch. I just have to follow. IMAC. IMAC. I'm not, not familiar with that. IMAC. My best good stock today is Joby. <laughs> Sorry, I laughed. And I was in Scotland for 10 years. A Joby is what a dog leaves on the floor. <laughs> When he has to go outside and you don't get him outside, he leaves a Joby. And it's like, oh, Joby. 13% today. How much? 13. Um, 13%? So yeah. yeah. And what, what's its price? Uh, opened up at $6.16, hit $7.03, and right now it's at six ninety six. Oh, so Thebes doesn't just play penny stock. Hey, what's up, guys? Enjoy your training. We appreciate you being here, Jerome Horace. Absolutely do. What about WTRH? I believe that's the delivery service. WTRH, boy, uh, that sounds real familiar to that me. That sounds familiar to me as well. Let's I see here. Share screen. screen. Boink. Boink. All right. Uh, w. What did oh, he say? 5% today. Uh, worth about 41 cents at the moment. What was the name of that stock? There it is. WTRH. WTRH. 27% on the day. All right. They did, uh, boy, their volume was pretty much exactly the same. They did 18 million yesterday and just a couple hundred thousand over that today, which is, you know, sideways is better than downways. Uh, share structure, not quite sure what it is. It's under 158 million. That's about what I can tell you there. Uh, waiter Holdings. Waiter Holdings. That's a dead giveaway. They are making some good money. That's $182 million. They got to keep $73 million last year. And last quarter, they did $35 million and got to keep $15 million. So they're definitely making money. Uh, they're on the NASDAQ. Ah, $0.42. Cents. So they're under a dollar. They got to get up. 26% gains today. And what does that chart look like? WTRH curling up. It's definitely curling up. Oh, nice breakout. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's see here. That's on the one hour. Um, yeah. So again, you can see all the technicals are up. RSI is overbought, and I'm on the one hour here. 
and let's come down to the five minute. Let's just see, because it looks like, all right, that that's not bad, folks. See what happened here as far as I'm concerned. I can tell it's a strong gain. Instead of coming up here, when it spreads that far, the 10 is away from all of the SMAs. It did start to fall here. It did, but it could have fallen a lot harder. It's bouncing off of the 50 right now and riding it. It actually looks pretty good. The RSI has got a good ricochet going on right now. doesn't look like it's going to continue surging, but it does look like it has got a good growth pattern going right at this moment. Wow, she had some big big bounces here back in uh, – that, that was just uh, – about a month ago, took a big hard dip, but she respects the strong SMAs. That's something you can say about this stock. She definitely sticks to her 200s and her 50s. And right now she is hugging that 50 over at that five minute. Yeah, I think I did talk about this one about a week ago, maybe. And I can't remember. Did she have news? That's probably why I looked at it. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Who got sick? Blame me. <laughs> Let's see. News. Eh, no news. Must have been a disclosure I found. 4A, that means somebody bought some shares as far as I remember. A Form 4, yeah, that's a share. That wasn't what I showed you. 8-1, a 3, 8K, 27. Let's see here. 26 waiter holdings received approval from NASDAQ listing qualifications at the company's application to transfer the listing of its common stock from NASDAQ. Global to NASDAQ capital market has been approved. You know, I'm not that familiar with NASDAQ to know that they had different sections like that. NASDAQ global and NASDAQ capital. So they made a shift. Now, I don't know if that helps their dollar situation, their compliance. The other day, I saw a stock that was under a dollar. I talked about it in my video. But they got a non-compliance for market cap. It wasn't their price minimum. It was market cap. It was the first time I'd seen it. They were under $50 million for 45 days, and they have to get it back over $50 million. Well, they're at $32 million and it was like $0.42, cents, and they've only got 39 million shares. So even if it went to a dollar, that would only be $39 million for a market cap. They would have to get it up to like a dollar and a quarter to hit that. So... I was looking at that just for that push up to a dollar and a quarter from 42 cents. I don't know how they were going to do it. So that's not what I showed you guys. I'm not, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't remember. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, any of these delivery companies to me, all of them, DoorDash is uh, Uber into delivery now. Did they finally? Yep, Uber like Eats. They've got Uber Eats and they just purchased uh, Postmates not too long ago. Right. Yep. So there's a lot of little guys and a lot of big guys in delivery right now. Yep. Wow, I hate that. All right, ILST under new management and filings today. Oh, really? I think they, I think they pushed today, if I remember. On, I feel like that was on Twitter, all over Twitter today. Thank yeah, you, Meta USA. 40% today. I missed. ILST. <laughs> Oh, let me see. Peter Lynch over 5% over owner in IMAC. Interesting. Changing to ASAP. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. I'm on board now. All right. Joby, we didn't take a look at. What do we got here? Six minutes. I want to see what a Joby looks like. I feel funny saying that. You just don't know how funny I feel saying that. Joby. Now, Joby does sound familiar. I'll bet you if I see the name of this company, I'm going to recognize it. Joby Av Aviation. Yes, sir. So we've had three days of growth here, and it's getting stronger. She's bouncing on that 50-day SMA all the way up. Boing, boing, boing. Looks very confident in that bounce. Uh, right now, it looks like she's about ready to take a dive. You got your PPO, which is about ready to do a crossover here. I mean, it could ricochet. You see it ricocheted here. It doesn't go underneath very much at all. Really doesn't. But that's a pretty strong incline coming down. We see we right there you can tell the change of direction. It was going up, 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 up. Even though this is going down, it's only showing the trend is, is staying steady. Now the trend is changing, which means, well, if it's not going up, it's going down. MACD is falling. We had a divergence going on there, and the RSI is falling. So it looks like she's about ready to take a dip, actually, 
on the on the short term but on that long term oh come on yeah she's riding on that 200 and pulling away fast yeah i think she's gonna pull back maybe to well she seems to have right about in here i don't have i don't use the fibonacci but i use close enough to the fibonacci i look at the bottom and the top of surges where things begin and things end and then i just find the bloody middle and if it will keep half of that i'm happy so there's a, I mean, honestly, there, there's a chance it could fall back down somewhere to this 20, which would be the next SMA, which is right in the halfway point of that big giant surge. However, sitting on the hour, I'd say she's going to run. I mean, on the hour, at least she's looking very strong. In a five minute, she's had a pullback, but it could change just like that. Joby, let's take a look at her information. J-O-B-Y. I think uh I think she had some sort of news not too long ago. Uh we got some form fours there, so we got insiders buying or selling shares. Now that's the same bloody thing. Uh news. Anytime you want to bring it up, we'd be happy. <laughs> Nothing. Doggone it. So maybe I found some Twitter information. I got to tell you, folks, Twitter does give me a lot of information. I don't consider it gold. You know, it's not gospel, but they're leads. It may be wrong. I'll tell you the biggest thing I find wrong on Twitter. This is my biggest complaint. People will put up a press release or some piece of news and they'll throw it up there. And that's great. It's like, oh, yeah. Well, they cut it so that you couldn't see the date, 2016 mm -hmm. or 2021. Well, that's that doesn't count. I mean, that's got nothing to do with what's going on right now. So you've got to verify. That's all I'm saying. Verify your information. But they're good leads. I find right. it easier to do research if somebody gives me a keyword. Just give me a keyword. That's all I'm looking for. And Twitter's great at that. But I normally get more than that. And now I'm following people who do their DD. There's a lot of good stock hounds out there, folks. Find the type of hound you want. Some follow, you know, trips those triple zero stocks, which there's lots of money on, but they're long holds normally, unless you can catch one on time. And if you can find someone who can pick them, oh, get in his corner, follow him, because that's the good money there. But it's the most risky money. I like to trade double zeros, less risk, great gains, short movements. But stocks over a penny have more security. You can get some good runs out of those. People feel that the stock's worth something if it's least worth a penny right anything under a penny it's like what what's wrong with that company you got anything to add i know i've done most of the talking here jackson um not really i do have uh one play their ticker is t-a-n-h um i believe yeah uh, you sure. you bring it up my my fingers are calloused yeah so i can pull up the chart we can have it up here while i talk um just give me one moment um but that is Scottish true they are they are interesting they have 105 million in assets and a market cap of only 5 million so really something to take a look at yeah 105 million in assets yeah so i i alerted that one in the discord just yesterday um and mm -hmm. i sold for about i think eight percent that that's what i call potential it's under the radar they're worth more than their bloody market cap by a long shot i mean yeah. you're not expecting it to be even but you don't expect that much of a divergence right so I bought in at, at 0.29, sold at 0.32. Just a quick, I didn't expect this to happen so quickly. Um, bought in yesterday. This is the daily. So let me throw it on the hourly just so we can see a little bit better movement. Uh, there you go. There we go. Yeah, so, you got to stretch out those little tiny movements, uh, right? They're so, so tiny. Yep. But um, I got in about here, right about here. Um, and I sold it just above here. I sold at 0.32. Um, is where I got filled. So, you know, just, just under 10%. Um, I know I was fine. It was just one, one night overnight hold. Um, and is that a NASDAQ out. stock? Yes. Yep. Right. NASDAQ. So you didn't have to pay any fees. So 10% no, no, was a worthy no 10%. Yes, it was. It was a real yeah. 10%. So I was on Weeble, <laughs> so no commissions either. So, uh, it was a good play. Um, it's still in the running as well. I may add to it on a dip soon. Uh, cause you know, if, 105 million in assets, only five million dollar market cap. You know, it's it might it might. What pop. is it this company does, Jackson? You know, I couldn't tell you. I only looked at their their financials. 
And sometimes that's all it takes. You know, you don't have to know a company inside and out if you're day trading it. You right. really don't. I know, I know traders that never look at the news and trade stocks. Yeah, I mean, when I'm day trading, I'm not looking at news. Like, I mean, maybe the the news will dictate some some aspects of it, but right, you know, I'm mostly technical. So if it's just a one day deal, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, now, if you're gonna hold for a month, you should probably month plus. You should probably know what they're doing. Yeah, the longer you hold it, the deeper your dive should be into the research. Right. And if it's going to be a long hold, company. that's all I know. First um, thing I would say is study the management. Hold. If you're looking at a stock for a year, two years, because, and here's the thing, folks, here's a warning. Just a couple of things, food for thought. Long holds on the OTC can be dangerous. Company can be grand. Management could be great. They could do a reverse split. You never know. You get into a company look at their filings for the last 12 months eight months ago they may have voted on a reverse split passed it left it to management's discretion and 10 months later which is a month after you got in they do the reverse split there was no news press there was no filing because they already notified you 10 months ago right you, you need to do your research if you're going to hold a stock long term there's a lot of factors that can come into play as he said Look at the assets. If they're not holding any money right now, anything goes wrong. They could be in jeopardy just that quick. Right. Good. So, yeah, that was just something I, I, I played recently. Um, I actually sold today. Um, so just How long did you hold it? Interested. I bought at probably uh, 3.30 Eastern um, yesterday, and I sold at about noon today. Just. Just a day, just under less than day. 24 hours. That's a day trade. I know you went between two days, but <laughs> yeah, nice, trade. nice play. And that's yeah, really all it takes. You know, honestly, we all want to get rich, but you know, swinging for the fences, you're going to get more strikeouts. As a matter of fact, Babe Ruth was also the strikeout <laughs> king. In case most of you didn't know that, he yeah. struck out more often than he hit home runs. So that's what happens. But if you get used to just getting on first base, Taking that 10%, taking 15% over and over again, especially on penny stocks on the NASDAQ in New York where you don't have to pay fees, it builds up, folks. Look at your 20 days over a full month of trading yeah. and add that all up. You and know, a penny you'll a day. Wake up and there will be a home run. You wake up to a home run. Uh, yeah, and if you're making trades every day, one's going to fall into your lap. I'm not saying take it and get out. You're following the technicals. The technicals are your exit door. If the door opens up, you should take it. If you see everything starting to turn on your technicals, why hang around hoping for more gains? It may come, but you may have to go through hours of being dragged across broken glass before it decides to go up again. Yeah. Avoid that. Just, you know, take your money, find another play that makes you feel good. If you're sweating it, you should have probably got out. Right. I see we're over five. I'm sure nobody really minded. I appreciate all of you who showed up. If I didn't mention somebody there, I am sorry because I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, uh, Camilla and Nocturnal. Nikki. Hello, <laughs> Nikki. <laughs> Ain't that funny? <laughs> Nikki's there. Top Steeler Jurgen. All of you guys, you make this possible. I don't need a thousand people. I just need a couple who appreciate what we do. And I hope we make a difference. Jackson, thanks for being here today, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome anytime. Seems like this is going to become like the, uh, oh, I don't know, those night talk shows. We're just going to have people cycling through who want to talk through. about whatever they're doing. Hey, that might be a thing, you know. Yeah, it's new guest. All right, folks. We will be here next week, Thursday. I don't know who will be with me. Maybe Snoopy, maybe Nikki, Lily, Jackson. I don't know. But somebody will be here. I'll be here. I hope you're here as well. We'll see you then, folks. Bye, guys.